The use of drugs to enhance combatants' performance during war is a widely documented tradition in history. It dates back even to ancient times, for instance, with Viking warriors consuming hallucinogenic mushrooms to become immune to pain. In more modern contexts, there are irrefutable pieces of evidence of drugs administered to soldiers by their superiors. These ranged from cocaine in the trenches of World War I to anabolic steroids in current conflicts, even passing through LSD experiments by the CIA. In this regard, the Nazis were not left behind. During their conquests in Europe, they conducted numerous trials with the aim of achieving the perfect soldier, capable of carrying out orders without rest and without being affected by hunger or morality. If they succeeded, their victory would be almost guaranteed. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you all about the experiments to create the Nazi super soldier during World War II. Long before Hitler came to power, Germany was already a pioneer in the chemical industry. For example, morphine, an opioid used as an analgesic but with great addictive power, was discovered by the German Friedrich Wilhelm Adam Serturner in the early 19th century. The first pharmaceutical companies were of German origin, and the most well-known companies today, such as Bayer and Pfizer, also share this origin. By the 1920s, the country was one of the leaders in the manufacturing of morphine and cocaine, which were legal at that time. The population, severely affected by the economic crisis following its defeat in World War I, sought to alleviate their sorrows through these drugs, as we can see in the following video. Well, First of all, we have to understand that cocaine bueno, en primer lugar tenemos que entender que la cocaína fue un producto alemán. La compañía alemana Merck la patentó en los años 20. Y por ejemplo, Perú exhortaba a toda su producción de coca al puerto de Hamburgo de manera legal en esa época. En Alemania, la cocaína era un producto legal muy conocido. But there was a man who viewed these habits with disdain. For him, drug addiction was a sign of weak and subhuman character. We're talking about Adolf Hitler, whose Nazi party campaigned with the idea of eliminating this aberrant attitude from the Aryan person. He and his followers associated dependence on these substances with Judaism, claiming that the latter were responsible for so many upstanding citizens falling into drug addiction. In his first year in power, Hitler made a number of decisions to eliminate those he saw as lost cases from society, from prison sentences of two years or more for addicts, to banning their marriage, even their sterilization. But much more terrible measures were also employed. Grouping them with other people accused of having mental illnesses, they were systematically eliminated through euthanasia under the Action T4 program. This operation began shortly after the start of World War II and aimed to eliminate those perceived by the government as genetically inferior, as the following video says. El programa T4 estaba comprometido con la purificación de la raza mediante la esterilización obligatoria y la eutanasia. Cualquiera que se considerara genéticamente defectuoso. Los enfermos mentales, los discapacitados, los homosexuales, eran blancos potenciales del programa T4. Victims of this program would include both people from territories conquered by Germany and citizens of the Third Reich itself. But even so, with all these measures criminalizing these acts, the German population continued to consume drugs, and not illegally. How did this happen? Many drugs started out being legally used until after a while, adverse effects were noticed in the population. The case of cocaine was already mentioned, and the same happened in these years with other products, for example, methamphetamine. In 1938, it was sold under the name Pervitine, or Pervitina, without any regulation. People saw it as something akin to coffee, only much more potent. When they took it, they felt an energizing effect that made them able to resist sleep for hours. It suppressed hunger and gave them a boost of confidence. It was even marketed in chocolate tablets or candies to lift the mood. 
It would be naive to say that its harmful side effects were unknown during these years of unrestricted sale, but they were concealed from the public. Let's hear the words of a historian on this event. En 1938, el laboratorio Temmler comenzó a sintetizar la primera anfetamina con fines médicos. Se comercializó con el nombre de Pervitina. El eslogan rezaba Für die Gesundheit para la salud. It didn't take long until the Nazi government ordered experiments with this drug, aiming to enhance the performance of their armed forces in combat. Hitler and his generals had devised strategies to crush their enemies based on speed, through Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War. This required rapid and coordinated movements from all elements of the armed forces, primarily infantry and armored vehicles. The Nazi leaders wanted to avoid at all costs a war of attrition like the one that occurred during the First World War, which ended in their defeat. To carry out these innovative tactics, they needed their troops to be in a constant state of alert, disregarding combat fatigue and persisting with their objectives. According to the plans, large amounts of territory had to be covered in a short time to overwhelm enemy soldiers, so breaks for sleeping or eating had to be few or simply non-existent. One of the main proponents of the idea of drugging troops to achieve good results was Otto Ranke. This man was the director of the Institute of General and Defense Physiology of the Third Reich, and he always sought to fight against combat fatigue. For him, the last 15 minutes of a battle could decide who would win, so he required troops to be resilient and not succumb to fatigue. The first thing he did was an experiment with three groups of soldiers, they were ordered to perform mathematical exercises for a large number of hours. To help them, one group was given coffee, another a placebo, and the last group, pervitine. The results spoke for themselves. Those who had consumed methamphetamine had solved the problems more quickly and without distractions. It didn't matter that their answers were incorrect. The German high command, satisfied with the evidence, approved its use in the armed forces. Ranke was pleased. The real-world test would not be long in coming. World War II began with the Nazi invasion of Poland in September 1939. The Polish army resisted for just under a month before being defeated. In May 1940, Germany conquered Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and France. It took them only six weeks. According to some researchers, in both instances, the attackers used large quantities of pervitine to achieve these incredible feats. It's said that 35 million tablets of the drug were distributed to German soldiers, mainly to tank crews and infantry. These soldiers were tasked with covering tens to hundreds of kilometers in just days, fighting for every meter of gained ground. Due to these astonishing actions, there is no doubt they were key in the conquest of the mentioned countries. We can now listen to a military officer explaining to his men how the Blitzkrieg worked. And the defense was doomed to failure because it was confronted with an entirely new technique in warfare, the plain tank infantry team in action. The world was staggered by the speed with which the German armored columns moved. What was the secret that enabled armies to move so far so rapidly? The secret lay in the organization of the striking spearhead. Armored forces came first, closely followed by motorized divisions which peeled off, forming solid walls. And through the corridor, thus formed, raced the supply trucks to feed the ever-lengthening column. The reports of the test with Pervitin spoke of desired effects, such as increased attention span, improved performance, excellent mood, maximum discipline, and great dynamism. This partly explains how they were able to surpass enemy defenses in the way they did. No one expected such a swift mobilization of such a massive force to be possible. Reports from the invaded countries speak of German troops appearing at frontline positions hours or even days earlier than anticipated. The fighters called them Stuka pills, 
This was a dive bomber used by the German Air Force. Soldiers said that the adrenaline rush felt when the plane began its descent, before an attack was similar to the effect produced when taking this drug. After these results, the Nazi leaders were convinced they had found a pharmaceutical miracle, almost capable of winning the war on its own. But this illusion was soon shattered. Nowadays, the adverse effects of methamphetamine are well documented. There's a reason why its sale and distribution are illegal, but in the early 1940s, the severity of these conditions was not fully understood. It was soon observed that although the performance of soldiers who had taken Pervitin was exceptionally high, it only lasted for a few hours. The next day the men were in a terrible state, unfit for combat. Anxiety, insomnia, bursts of violence, and even hallucinations were just some of the effects recorded in the drugged men. To make matters worse, they needed several days to recover from their deplorable state. Additionally, the drug had a tremendously powerful addictive effect, so the troops suffered withdrawal syndromes after just mild exposure to Pervitin. This made them very susceptible to fits of rage, where they would vent their anger on innocent civilians or even their superiors. There were also reports of heart attacks that ended the lives of the affected soldiers. Not only the rank-and-file soldiers suffered the consequences of these products, Hermann Goering, head of the German Air Force and creator of the Gestapo, the Nazi secret police, was a known morphine addict. He had developed it during World War I and would be subject to this vice until the end of his days. It was also rumored that Otto Ranke consumed Pervitin daily, the product he had pushed so much. But even the supreme leader, Adolf Hitler, had his drug secret. While there is no evidence that he took methamphetamines, there is no doubt that he frequently injected himself with a cocktail of drugs including opioids, steroids, and more, supplied by his personal doctor. In particular, there are records of his dependence on Eucodal, a painkiller much more powerful than morphine. Despite the relaxation of Nazi policies regarding drug consumption, they had to face the reality that an army of addicts or people in withdrawal would not be able to win the war. By 1941, the chief physician of the Third Reich, Leonardo Conti, who was involved in the aforementioned Action T4 plan, began reporting on the harmful effects of pervitin. Thus, the drug became part of the list of prohibited medications. It was only allowed by prescription and in moderation. Due to all the adverse effects that made the troops unpredictable, taking it during combat was discouraged. Nevertheless, there are records of soldiers with symptoms of methamphetamine withdrawal until 1942, during the invasion of the Soviet Union. Many needed the product to endure the intense cold of the Russian winter, and numerous pilots couldn't carry out their large number of air missions without their usual consumption. Once they fell into the habit, it was difficult for these men to get out of it, and smuggling of the pills became a frequent market. But despite Pervitin being banned, this wasn't the last attempt by Nazi Germany to develop super soldiers. By 1944, the fate of the war was already sealed. The Third Reich was in full retreat towards Berlin, fighting on two fronts. In the West, the Allies were quickly reclaiming Western Europe, while in the East, the Soviet Red Army was sweeping aside its enemies, leaving thousands dead in its wake. Seeking the miracle that would allow them to win the conflict, Nazi scientists turned again to drugs. One of Hitler's illusory theories was to defeat his enemies with mini submarines. These consisted of vehicles with one or two crew members that would be able to infiltrate among enemy vessels to torpedo them without being discovered. To achieve the maximum possible effectiveness in these operations, a way was needed to keep these men alert and focused on their work for the entire duration of these missions. Living conditions in submarines were appalling, with confinement in a cramped space, constant engine noise, lack of oxygen, and the need to stay awake for long periods. Something even more potent than pervitine was needed. You can see what these vehicles were like in the following video. Este submarino para un solo tripulante se utilizó a finales de la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Dentro de esta cápsula iba un soldado, cuya misión era hundir los barcos del enemigo. 
Debajo hay un torpedo armado. La particularidad de este sistema es que la cápsula solo podía abrirse y cerrarse desde el exterior. Y como para los soldados, era muy duro desplazarse en esta embarcación, en este espacio tan exiguo, efectivamente los drogaban. The Nazis got to work. By late November 1944, they began experimenting with different chemical mixtures to find the miraculous drug. These trials took place in the Sachsenhausen concentration camp within Germany. There, political and military prisoners were housed, including Joseph Stalin's eldest son, the leader of the Soviet Union. One of the main objectives of this place was to design the most effective method for carrying out mass murders. It was one of the first detention centers where executions were tested using gas chambers. But this time, the Germans were seeking a different kind of outcome. To find the desired drug that would allow them to win the war, Nazi scientists cruelly experimented on prisoners from this camp. The tests involved giving each person a different mixture of drugs and forcing them to walk continuously around the yard. They were not allowed to stop until they collapsed from exhaustion. This was a real torture for the detainees, who, severely weakened by the inhumane conditions of their confinement, could not withstand these studies. Some became so exhausted that they were sent directly to the gas chamber at the end of the experiments. A historian recounts how these investigations were conducted in the following video. And what they did is taking Los médicos formaron dos two grupos de sujetos. Los observaban, los pesaban, les tomaban toda clase de medidas. Luego les administraban diferentes drogas en diversas dosis y les hacían caminar lo más rápido posible, cargando con unas mochilas muy pesadas. Y veían cuánto tiempo aguantaban el ritmo. Ten different mixtures were tested. The one that yielded the best results was called D9, which consisted of cocaine, morphine, and pervitin. They had managed to get the prisoners, even in their weakened state, to march 90 kilometers per day while carrying a load of 20 kilograms. However, this drug was never distributed among the Nazis, and its effects during combat could not be witnessed. These trials ended up being just another brutality perpetrated by the Germans without achieving anything in return. The investigations into drug use by the Nazis sparked intense debate. For some, they seek to justify or excuse the terrible actions of these individuals due to the use of drugs. This includes both the soldiers who committed war crimes and the leaders who ordered them, as well as the citizens who did not rebel. However, the authors of these reports, which brought to light the use of these products, declare that pervitin or any other chemical was not the determining factor in the behavior of the German forces during and before World War II. The Nazi leaders and their subordinates had total freedom to make their decisions. Despite all the tests carried out by the Germans, they never managed to obtain the desired super soldier capable of delivering victory. What they did achieve was to carry out cruel experiments using human beings whether prisoners or their own soldiers, as guinea pigs. Additionally, they created hundreds or thousands of addicted veterans who, even years after the conflict ended, continued to seek the effects of pervitin consumption, an ideology that viewed recurrent drug users as inferior, ironically led many of their own supporters to fall into these habits. War is hell. Soldiers spend long hours of fatigue, enduring cold and hunger, all while fighting against the enemy. The limit of human resistance has been a factor that determined victories and defeats throughout history. But in a period of World War II, the Third Reich found a temporary solution to those physical limitations. Innovative tactics? New weapons? No, a drug derived from methamphetamine and cocaine that transformed soldiers into true berserkers capable of spending whole days without rest, making possible the infamous Blitzkrieg, and even, they say, sending many submarines to London. 
In this new military history video we are going to tell you all about the drugs that the Nazis used on their soldiers. But before continuing, and if you are a fan of firearms, we want to invite you to our new channel, World of Guns, dedicated to analyzing and exploring the most powerful, modern and unusual weapons in the world, as well as their combat history, their development and much more. You can find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment, don't miss it and give us your support by subscribing to World of Guns. And now, let's go on with today's video. On September 1, 1939, German troops invaded Poland, truly beginning World War II. The Nazi advance was overwhelming, they conquered the country in barely a month. It was the first great demonstration of the strategy called Blitzkrieg or Lightning War. But for that technique to be possible, the tank crews did not sleep for days to keep the tanks moving almost constantly. The Germans knew that they had to keep their men awake, and the invention of energy drinks was still several years away, so the leaders of the Third Reich distributed more than 35 million pills of a drug derived from methamphetamine among the troops, the Pervitin. In 1939, the German doctor Otto Renke spoke of the benefits of Pervitin as if it were a divine elixir. In most people, the substance increases self-confidence, concentration and willingness to take risks. The importance of narcotics during World War II cannot be ignored, even Adolf Hitler himself was addicted to numerous substances, some claim that he consumed up to 74 different types of drugs during the war, most of them prescribed by his personal doctor, Theo Morrill. In 2016, the massive use of Pervitin among men aboard powerful panzers was definitively demonstrated. According to the investigations, the soldiers were not fully aware of what they were consuming, they only knew that they were official orders and that the pills helped them stay awake and with great energy to carry out one of the most violent invasions in history. It would be inaccurate to say that the Nazis discovered Pervitin, it was a product freely consumed by a large part of the population, but they were the first to see its potential on the battlefield. The military doctor Otto Renka, director of defense physiology at the military academy, was the main supporter of the use of this drug. In his words, relaxing for a day can decide the battle, resisting that extra quarter of an hour can be decisive. Interested in the effects of the stimulant, the military man organized two trials in which he tested its results, with different conclusions. On the one hand, he established that those who took the substance could spend a lot of time awake and with a lot of energy. In contrast, Pervitin did not support complex activities that require fine motor skills. Despite the failures found, Ranka became the greatest defender of the drug and promoted its delivery to the hundreds of thousands of German soldiers who participated in the invasion of Poland. The effects were immediate. In a letter sent from the German 3rd Armored Division in September 1939, the effects of Pervitin on tankers are detailed, euphoria, increased attention, improved performance. Work carried out without problems, with a manifest stimulating effect and sensation of freshness. A whole day of service without rest, and no depression or return to normal state of mind. The same official source describes how the soldiers were fresh and alert with great discipline and a bit of euphoria going into combat. As if this were not enough, the Pervitin also severely reduced the appetite of the soldiers and gave them a great work drive. In that letter, an officer describes how he was able to stay up three nights in a row fighting the Poles, all thanks to Pervitin. It was only at the end of 1941 that the addictive effects of this methamphetamine derivative became apparent. Germany ran a serious risk of becoming a country of addicts dependent on a drug that could not be administered in perpetuity, which is why the Third Reich made the decision to regulate and drastically reduce the delivery of these pills. But while this stimulant drug was enough for the first big fights of World War II, as the conflict progressed, Germany had to demand even more from its soldiers. In March 1944, Third Reich Vice Admiral Helmut High requested the creation of a new drug that could give soldiers near superhuman strength and stamina. The pharmacist Gerhard Orzakowski and his research group developed a substance that they could dose in tablets and which they named D9. 
Each tablet contained 5 mg of oxycodone, 5 mg of cocaine and 3 mg of pervitin, the methamphetamine derivative developed by the Nazis themselves in 1939. Before giving the formula to soldiers, they conducted tests on prisoners at the Sachsenhausen camp. The prisoners were able to march up to 90 kilometers a day without rest, carrying 20 kilograms in their backpacks. D9 actually worked, but the war was all but over by the time the substance was ready for consumption. While the D9 was unable to bring victory to Hitler, there was an alleged secret plan involving gum laced with cocaine, methamphetamine, and other highly addictive stimulants. Towards the end of the war, Germany pursued desperate strategies, including sending small submarine U-boats to England, with the aim of entering the River Thames and delivering one last big blow to one of its main enemies in Europe. It is estimated that 30 of these small submarines were manufactured, and that they were operated by soldiers of small stature and even 16-year-olds. The problem is that the trip in these small submersibles could last up to four days, in which the only crew member of the ship could not sleep or rest. How to get a soldier to have so much resistance and energy? The answer, as throughout World War II, lay in chemical stimulants. This is how they were given a dose of candy or gum with the same formula as the IDX pills, a cocktail of the most powerful stimulant drugs. The result was disastrous, many of the soldiers began to hallucinate long before reaching their objective, others had fatal accidents caused by the overstimulation generated by such a mixture of drugs. The truth is that none of these ships reached London, the attack by the narcotic submarines was a complete failure, one of the last of the already crumbling Third Reich. Why was the Third Reich so prone to drug use? If we look at the history of both lower-ranking soldiers and senior officers, there are many accounts of heavy use of highly addictive drugs. The fact is that, even before the creation of the Nazi party, Germany was one of the countries with the greatest advances in pharmaceutical matters, the country's chemical industry was enormous and had the technology and capacity to supply the entire German army with drugs. There are illuminating data in this regard, the already powerful German pharmaceutical complex manufactured 40% of the world's production of morphine and led 80% of the international cocaine market. Under such circumstances, it is logical that powerful drugs such as pervitin, IDX and cocaine gum have been commonplace among the troops of the Third Reich. The use of drugs to improve the effectiveness of troops on the battlefield is really nothing new in warfare. Since ancient times, we can see cases such as the Berserker, Viking warriors with a devastating performance in combat, which made Julius Caesar himself tremble. They went into a frenzy and fought naked against their enemies, whom they bit and tore to pieces in the most brutal ways. Many historians attribute this behavior to the consumption of hallucinogenic mushrooms or beer contaminated with lysergic acid, according to sources dating back to the 13th century. Not surprisingly, almost a thousand years later, the Germanic armies continued this tradition. Although some drugs such as cocaine and hashish had a widespread medicinal use both in the East and in the West, today we know that Adolf Hitler's forces had a very powerful narcotic that helped them on the battlefield, pervitin. This methamphetamine, produced by the German state, was deliberately given to the troops during the invasion of Poland, and, although it improved the physical capacity of the men, it also eventually caused a level of addiction that became a problem for the high command. Join us in a new episode of Military History to learn how the armies used drugs during World War II to improve their performance. Are you ready? Then, prepare to travel back in time. Every major war had some drug as a protagonist, even though this is not usually shown in the epic stories that occurred during these conflicts. During the First World War, for example, the use of cocaine and morphine became widespread, which, although they had medical or therapeutic uses, caused open abuse by the troops. During World War II, methamphetamines would be chosen to improve the physical, emotional and psychological performance of soldiers. 
Later, just to mention it, heroin would be used by more than 70% of Americans deployed to Vietnam. But in this video we'll focus on the pills that played a key role during the 1940s and that were consumed by Japanese, North American and European soldiers, although the origin of their massive application was in the German ranks. During the beginning of World War II, Germany expanded rapidly thanks to Blitzkrieg, a strategy based on rapid combat, with a large advancing force, taking the defensive forces of the cities by surprise and crushing them in a short time. Beyond its effectiveness, the Blitzkrieg implied a difficulty, the troops, especially the tank corps, had to traverse great distances without resting or refueling, and even carry out consecutive missions for 48 hours. This represented a terrible physical and mental demand for the tankers, engineers, escorts, and other elements that participated in the campaigns. The solution that the German high command found was to provide its soldiers with a drug that would improve their performance. Pervitin was a derivative of methamphetamine, which provided the necessary physical and psychological stimuli to facilitate blitzkrieg tactics. In terms of bodily performance, it eliminated tiredness and drowsiness, and generated a rush of adrenaline that made soldiers feel strong and energetic. In terms of mental performance, it increased concentration, reflexes and improved the ability to make decisions, since after consuming the pills, men acquired enormous self-confidence and even entered a euphoric state like the Viking berserkers. The combination of these two factors made the German soldiers feel, for a period of time, indestructible. This allowed mechanized battalions to advance at inhuman rates, to take entire cities in weeks if not days, and to constantly harass the enemy relentlessly. Even Winston Churchill was deeply impressed by what he called the feat of the German tank corps, which seemed to be advancing unstoppably on Europe. The initial production of Pervitin was 35 million pills, which were distributed among troops heading to the front lines. However, by 1940 and onwards, production had to be increased, since the German high command did not count on the great side effect of any psychoactive drug addiction. Large contingents of soldiers became deeply addicted to pervitin, leading to all the typical problems that drug use, once stopped, creates. To begin with, when the effect of methamphetamine wore off, men who had used it constantly for several weeks, experienced all the accumulated fatigue, which left them out of action for entire days. Worse still was the withdrawal syndrome, which caused constant physical discomfort, as well as fits of rage that promoted violence among Hitler's own ranks. Many soldiers died from pervitin, some from cardiac arrest due to overdose, others from physical exhaustion after abusing the drug for long periods, completely destroying their metabolism, and, to a lesser extent, killed by their comrades to get a handful of pills when methamphetamine became scarce. In many cases, they suffered partial or total psychological damage, with panic or anxiety attacks, hallucinations, stress, night terrors, among other disabling problems. This was because in 1941, Germany decided to reduce the production of pervitin to a minimum. One of the factors was that the drug leaked into the civilian population, and, although a prescription was required to legally acquire it, a fairly large parallel market was created. It also began to be widely consumed by German officers not on the front lines, with some sources indicating that even the Führer himself became addicted to the pills. At the same time, some shipments were sent for the troops that acted in the Barbarossa operation, although, unlike the initial campaigns in Poland and Eastern Europe, it did not have a positive impact. Taken together, Pervitin, which began as a tool to make the German expansionist tactic work, became a thorn in the side of the Nazi top brass. The Allies, for their part, tried to replicate the strategy by using a methamphetamine pill very similar to what we now call speed, with an effect similar to pervitin, but due to the problems it was causing Hitler, they did not delve into its use. In fact, among the ranks of the United States and Great Britain, drug abuse was related to morphine, which was given in large quantities to doctors for application on the battlefield. On the other hand, since historians have brought to light the story, which was hidden for several years, a great controversy has arisen, since there are those who assure that, if they were drug addicts, Nazi officials, including Hitler, could have acted by will but under the alienating effects of consumption. However, many experts say that it is impossible to justify the genocide carried out by the National Socialist Party, as well as the desire to conquer all of Europe, with dependence on pervitin. We are reaching the end of this video, and we want to know your opinion. 
Do you think that the current military forces continue to promote or abuse psychoactive substances to obtain better results in the performance of the troops? Leave us your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned for our next video.